Good morning, everyone. This is Tracy Wright, member of your board, and we are so happy to have one of our own, Martha Newport. She is going to talk to us about how to stay sane in real estate. We need that. So I'm going to turn it over to Martha. Good morning. Awesome. Good morning, Tracy. Thanks, everyone, for having me and joining today at the crazy, busy time of the year. It seemed like a nice time to talk about how to maybe keep all your stuff in order. Um, so I'm happy to talk to you today about how I stay sane in real estate and what I do when I'm not. Also, you know, life or whatever. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. And thanks for joining. And thanks for those of you who are watching. Okay, thanks for slides. Oh, there we go. Okay, I just had to get my workflow down here. Um, so before we start, though, I did want to give you a couple of warnings. One, I am not a mental health professional, so please do not look to me for your very specific mental health needs. Um, also, I'm using the term sane quite loosely, so um, please also don't assume that I am whatever version of saying that you, you believe that word means. So um, just those two warnings before we get started. Um, and I also want to make a sincere request is that I am going to be really open and honest um, about some things and also welcome your questions, hard questions, any questions. Um, and I just ask that you put aside any preconceived notions about um, me, uh, my team, my life, what you think is right or wrong in relation to all of this. Just come to this presentation and stay on this presentation with an open mind, an open heart, and um, yeah, that's what I ask. Does that sound good? Reasonable? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, so I want to start just by showing you sort of this glimpse that I think some people, you know, on social media or whatever people have of me and my life and maybe, you'll, you know, obviously have an amazing successful real estate team and business and the cutest dog in the world and happy family and like all the crazy exercise <laughs> videos, all those things, got to be realtor of the year, amazing. Um, and this stuff too. So no one that I know is that's uh, in this world with us is not a human. And with all of the joys and wonderful things, like Tracy said, how are you? How are things? Mm -hmm, all of it. Um, because these are all things that are have been part of my life and are part of my life too. So when I come to you with these tips that I'm bringing you today, I want you to know that this is this is not from a happy-go-lucky. Well, Martha has a perfect life, and so of course, you know all these things. These are the tools and things that I use in my real life, which is all of this. And sometimes I question, like people question, well, which one is real, right? Like, am I all all together and have this amazing successful life or am I a hot mess? Am I, do I have this amazing family and great kids or am I doing everything wrong? And which one is real? And the answer to that is the one that you feed. We all have the ups and downs, the good, the bad, the best self, the worst self, the great days, the really horrible days. And it's the one that we feed and the one that we focus on that is going to rise above and be with us most of the time. Okay. So <clears throat> now, <laughs> without all of that happened, here are my top 10 sanity tips for you for this holiday season slash being in real estate slash being a human in life in the world or whatever. So the first one is Stop trying to be damn perfect, okay? I tried this, didn't work out so well. Embrace your flaws, embrace the things you mess up, embrace your struggles. This is part of you, part of being human. And I can't turn my volume off, otherwise I can't hear you, but that just happened. Being a real estate agent, whatever. Um, 
And then align your work life with your values and priorities. So some of you may remember a story of when I started out in real estate, I really made sure that I had, uh, I hired an assistant very quickly because I wanted to be home at three o'clock with my kids instead of hiring a babysitter to be at home at three o'clock with my kids, right? So building in for your work life, what is important to you and what your priorities are, when you don't have that and you have that mismatch, you get a lot of additional stress and anxiety and can even go to depression, frustration. So really focus on building and making your work fit in with a life that you want. And then, Work on accepting that life is a beautiful, messy adventure and not a competitive, linear performance. You'll notice I have a little asterisk on the bottom of that one because winning is so fun. I love it so much. And it's just an adventure. So um, I'm going to pause just for a minute in case people have questions at each one. So please do jump in and let me know if you've got any questions and no questions are off limits because I'm me. Okay, number two is committing to growth. And human, as humans, although sometimes we put ourselves in houses and cars and things, we actually are part of nature and are meant to grow just like everything else in nature. So read, study, podcasts, question things, do all these things all the time, because when we stay stagnant and we have the same challenges and the same problems over and over again, that can really get us down. So just continuing to open up your mind and assess new things, new ideas can really, really help with getting through each day and becoming a, a better human every day. So, and, and then most, most, <laughs> the, the best way that you can grow is to fail, like to fall smack hard on your face over and over and over again. I'm really great at that, um, especially lately. So definitely try a lot of new things. Start small if you need to. And know that fear is just a little signal in your mind telling you that you are doing something new and growing. It's, it's meant to protect us and stop us from growing, but it's actually your little indicator that you're on the right track. So be afraid and then fall in your face. It works really well. <laughs> and then you might want to read that book. It looks good. Looks like a good one. <laughs> Number eight is taking care of your body every day. So our body is what helps us get around in this world is actually a very important vessel that we should love and honor and take care of. And food that you put in it is medicine. Exercise, moving it, taking care of it, medicine. Sleeping is medicine. And I think that we all know and understand if we choose not to do these medicines, then we're going to have prescription medicines or surgery medicines or heart attacks that need medicine. So you could choose these medicines, which are fairly readily available and don't require health insurance, or you can choose the yucky medicines. I think these ones are more fun. So, um, and I also, you know, this is a time of year where a lot of people are setting out, gonna be setting new resolutions, trying not to gain weight or trying to lose weight in January or doing all these things. My hope for you and and ask is that you change your thinking to be looking at these things as medicine that are taking care of yourself versus being mean to yourself and saying i can't eat this i need to do this i need to be smaller i need to you know i i suck at this or i can't have this cookie instead what are you putting in your body that's helping you and in addition to the other things that we enjoy this time of year, um, that is medicine and that is helping you feel better and looking the same way at, at exercise and sleep too. So like a positive loving place versus a meat place. Because pizza is also a thing. Number seven is to seek professional help, okay? Okay, so go to the damn doctor, go to the damn dentist, Okay, that's all important too. And go to the damn therapist. I 
personally, as a non-professional in this area, as a non-qualified professional to be giving this talk, um, I believe there's two kinds of people, those that have been to therapy and those who need to go to therapy. Okay, so do that so <laughs> that you get your head right and then everything else will fall into place. This might be my favorite meme of the presentation. I hope you enjoy. If you don't get it now, you will after you go to therapy. Okay, good talk. <laughs> the next one, number six, is to seek non-professional help. Um, this could look like phoning a friend and talking things out or texting if you're more introverted or not texting, I guess, if you're really introverted. Um, also, you need to go to therapy, though, because your friends don't want to be your therapist. So definitely still do that from the other slide. OK, and then asking for help when you need it. Um, Please look at the additional comment below Yoda for my <laughs> take on this bullet. It's very important and it's something I'm working on so hard right now, um, especially when you feel that you're overwhelmed, you can't physically do everything on your plate. It's okay to ask for help, okay, Martha? It's okay to ask for help, so. So there are people actually really love it when you ask them for help, even though you feel bad, might, might, sorry, I might feel bad asking people to help me. Um, and it makes people feel special and important and valued in your life, and you also need it. And um, in addition to this, I will just add on, it's okay to change a plan or ask, sometimes asking for help is saying, hey, is it okay if we reschedule this meeting? Is it okay if I don't send you to this till tomorrow? Like having the person that you are working with also help you out by being flexible. Um, it's okay to change those things too. Just has any questions on this one? Everyone else mastered this, it's just me then. You good? Okay. I think that's a great point martha and i think it's something that most of us don't really do a whole lot of and um it's really you could also look at it as just sort of a, keeping your 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 small community growing or going or mm -hmm. connected i love that yeah the the very best in our profession um some of the very best real estate agents are control freaks so that's probably no one else identifies with that on this call for sure. Um, and, and that's part of what makes us great is being, you know, on the ball and accountable and, and catching all the things and controlling all those things. It also tends to burn us out a little bit. Okay. Wondering what's behind door number five? Do nothing. Number five is do nothing. Rest, play, get away from your phone. I, I recently read that even when you take a break on your phone to go on Facebook or to play a game or anything like that, your, your brain actually doesn't signal that that's any different than work work. So if you work for two hours and then take a 15 minute break on your phone, from your brain's perspective, you didn't take a break. So getting away from your phone, which we're amazing at in real estate, obviously, stare at trees. Finish that. Listen to music, dance it out. Please do let me know how this goes because <laughs> I am also still very much growing in this area of doing nothing. Um, I love doing things. And if nothing else, um, continue just doing, taking that time away from the screen in the evenings, especially, but also throughout the day, really can help you recharge and be more productive and also just feel better all around. Martha, I just want to do this just so I can make this face. So <laughs> that's my fault. <laughs> just so I can be Mr. Bean. <laughs> so thanks for that. Goal, goals. Yeah. So welcome. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Does anyone have any um, tips they want to share on things that they do that are nothing related? I can write those down for myself. 
I have things that I attempt to do throughout the day. Yeah. Uh, I actually do put my phone down and walk away from my computer and I work on art projects for 15 minutes at a time just to break my kind of screen time up in my brain. And it's actually helped me a ton, a little bit. So yay. Good stuff. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. I'd love to see your face too if you want to come up. Armand, hi. Hey there. <laughs> I'll say that uh, pretty early on, I made a vow to my family not to answer the phone during dinner and have pretty much kept that vow all these years. And that's that's huge, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that just quiet time and sharing the meal and yep. If they want a house, they'll probably still want to eat or even the next morning. Yeah, I mean, you know, they'll wait an hour, you know, I'm not going to return the phone call later on in the evening and whatnot, you know, there's no real estate emergencies. No, nope. we're not saving lives, exactly. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good thing to remember when you feel like you can. Anyone else? So I've got one thing, Martha, that I mm -hmm. practice, I try to every day because I'm just like you're talking about, control freak, busy, 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 never stop. And so what I try to do is find like 10 or 15 minutes a day where I can be in a place, usually at home, and have no noise at all. And just mm. kind of like lay flat, close my eyes, and just have nothing going on. And I mean, that that's the opinion. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's, that's all. That's all. Thank you. No, I mean, that's the epitome of nothing, right? Like taking out all stimulus completely. Um, it's just so amazing for your brain. That's awesome. That's great. <laughs> and Elena says in the chat, meditation seems like a great idea, but then knowing y'all, you'd want to master that, you, like win at meditation. Yeah, okay, Elena. Yeah, you don't know us. You don't see me or no, but actually that one's coming up on a later slide. <laughs> so uh, number four is curating your life often. <clears throat> I think sometimes we try to like if we can just solve life and have our purpose and all these big things and have a great life, it's pretty um, impossible to do, to just like think of that and then do that right away. So instead trying to like find this big, perfect life where everything is figured out, try thinking like super small, really small. And that looks like adding little things that excite you or bring you joy and just little things. This year I started doing like little doodling and calligraphy because that seemed like something that I actually have wanted to do that since high school and hadn't done it. Um, and, and then, you know, you can't just keep adding things because we only have a limited number of <clears throat> hours in the day. So also permission to just delete things that you dread or no longer make you happy. Maybe there was something that you loved doing before and it's just not fun anymore. It, just because you added it to your life and it served you for a while doesn't mean that you have to continue doing it forever. So as you're going through your day, <clears throat> and your routines and all these things, asking yourself, like, do I still love doing this? And with no judgment either around, is this sophisticated? Does this make me look cool? Like, I mean, if you ever wanted someone to tell you how to not look cool, I, I got you there for sure. If you want to be cool, talk to Shelby Bishop for sure. Um, <clears throat> but just like, what is fun and makes you happy? Do more of that. And what do you hate? Stop doing that. And then as you keep doing that, your big, beautiful, happy life is right there. You just build a little bit at a time. This cat is everything also. Anyone, anything else recently that you started or stopped doing? I um, should talk about the art stuff. Hi, um, my name's Laura Morgan. This is fantastic. Hi. I want to oh, tell Laura, you. Thank you. Love. Um, having already like burnt out of one profession, this is just, and I've been here a year, I'd like to get maybe more than a year in the business. Um, but two things that I have done is um, there's a thing called forest bathing, where you go into nature and you just sort of absorb it. And there's uh, a wonderful book about it. It's real short and there's some articles about it. 
that I would be happy to send to anyone, but you just go out in nature and you um, breathe it in and take a walk. And it's not like the walk um, where you're trying to like um, beat your time or do anything like that, which I also try to do, but it's just a walk for your mental health. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I did is I signed up for a pottery class, but then I immediately got a diagnosis for shoulder surgery. So I only went to one, but I did go to one. Yes. So <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you, Laura. Awesome. I know I joked and said like staring at trees, but again, referring to the very beginning where we are actually creatures of nature, like that's where we belong. <laughs> so it really does, it really does help. Anyone else have something they added or deleted recently? This is my my daughter and I actually started doing this together, bullet journaling and like doodling and candy canes. Just really fun. Not achievement, just fun. <laughs> All right. So Martha, I have one thing I want to add, and then I promise yeah. I'll be quiet. <laughs> no, please don't be quiet. I don't want you to be quiet. So you know how a lot of times we'll ruminate over things that we're dreading or not looking forward to. Mm -hmm. And when we finally sit down and do that task, it takes us a very short time. And we're like, geez, why did I spend so much time mm -hmm. and energy on that? So one of the things that I try to do is whatever task, phone calls, email responses, paperwork, if there's something that I'm dreading the most, I try to do that first every day and just get it off my plate. Mm -hmm. And your bullet point that says delete things that you dread or no longer make you happy. So I felt like it was sort of related to that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it just helps sort of clear your mind. You're like, oh, that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And you just feel much better. And then you feel kind of dumb because you're like, geez, I spent all this time and energy where it didn't take me any time to take care of it. So awesome. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, all I'm happens. sure, Tracy, you're the only person on here that procrastinates things that they don't want to do. I definitely have never done that ever for sure. Um, yes. Eating the frog. Amazing. Because we do like we I hate doing the dishes. I, there are things that we do in our life that we have to do, and we can't delete everything. Um, so for sure, eating the frog and just not, I mean, the amount of time and energy you spend on something, <laughs> it could be 20 minutes or it could be three months and 20 minutes. Like, you know, maybe pick the, the first one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Yay. And Elena, you had one of your favorite. I'm not going to start it unknown. You click a unknown YouTube link while we're presenting, just because that seems like a little risky, even though it's you. But did you want to share what that is about? Yeah, it is a, a Harvey Danger lip dub that I saw a million years ago <laughs> by College Humor, and there, this whole office is singing. It looks like something you guys would do. <laughs> um, the whole office is is lip syncing this song and they've got this great camera work going through it and it just looks like one they're having an amazing time it's so funny it's so great it also makes me kind of want to dance and sing along with it but yeah it's just one of those things that when i watch it it makes me really happy there's also one of a german shepherd that uh will smile on command and so i have a, a little quick little thing I can turn to if I just need a little dog smile to get me going. But um, yeah, I mean, I just, for me, laughter is my coping mechanism. So I need to have that little bag of stuff that I can easily go to. I mean, I will laugh at almost anything. So, but sometimes it's hard to remember that mm -hmm. things are funny mm -hmm. <laughs> and you need a little help. Yes. Um, as long as I'm unmuted, I would like to say to, um, I guess it was a year ago, I did this program where we, they, they called it One Great Hour, and it was a group of people who got together um, virtually, of course, because it was those times, and um, basically set aside 45 minutes of time to kind of work together 
And the work was either something you'd been procrastinating. I know we've already established that none of us do that except for you one down there, Tracy, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah. mm -hmm. If you're procrastinating or <laughs> if it was something that you really wanted to do, but you never made time for it. Like it didn't, it didn't um, count as something you should be spending your time on because you were going to enjoy it and it wasn't going to be productive possibly. And um, so the interesting thing that came out of that was uh, having a set time to do that and, and giving yourself permission to turn off your phone for those 45 minutes mm -hmm. um, was amazing. I didn't realize how turning off your phone for 45 minutes could be so amazing. Um, but, uh, and the other thing that we did before that is five minutes of writing gratitudes. Mm -hmm. So, which is a really long time. Usually you're writing like three for the day or something, but this was five minutes and it makes you dig deep. But it's true. If you do that right before you have some hard work to do or something that you've been avoiding, that it can really put you in the right mindset to um to manage it much much better so awesome. that's it awesome did you for that one great hour did you do that was it weekly monthly it was um we did it five days a week oh. um at from like noon to one mm -hmm. and it was done by um a, a guy that basically not to make this too long i don't know how to make this short it's a problem I have. Um, it was a it was it was orchestrated by a company, we'll say, and mm -hmm. so they had it, it, you were on a Zoom call where you were just watching people interact, but they're also interacting with you in the chat, like mm -hmm. we are now, sort of. Yeah. And um, so it was very. Uh, you just felt you weren't alone when you were with like a couple hundred people all over the world, all spending time. It's like a study hall. You're all, you know, doing it at the same time, even though you're not working together. And there's something about that. And then coming together afterward and everyone sharing like, oh, I did this, or I did yoga for the first time, or I cleaned my pantry out. And it's amazing, you know, just a wide variety of things. Um, and it was really sad when they quit doing it because all of us had become actually quite addicted to it. And, and there was a group that went on to start their own one great hour, but it also included sharing things with other people like favorite books, fa you know, great movies. We did a, a, a playlist. Mm -hmm. So you could, you know, you could do something like that in your group, you know, where you guys had a playlist that you, people are adding stuff and then you're, still feeling connected to other people. And I think that's part of the problem is just the disconnect uh, between people and social media isn't really the same thing. Right. <laughs> I mean, uh, especially in a profession where uh, most people are working solo, right? That's, yeah. that's tricky. That's really tricky. And so was this like ongoing, basically, like it was just every day, every work day? Yeah, I mean, it was, we did it for, I think we did it for like three months. And then, like I said, there was a group of people who, after the company st stopped doing it, that uh, a group of people who just continued on, which I tried to do, but, um, you know, it's tough. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's tough. Mm -hmm. I had already got my taxes done at that point. So what did I need them for? So <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> So, oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, a little thing I added a couple months ago was um, a Facebook group called Memes That Make You Chuckle. You might want to write that down. And I start my day with my coffee and memes that make me chuckle. And they're, I, I didn't realize how much I loved puns. Like I knew I loved them, but like the amount that I love them. And then the, I curate that and then send it to Shelby, just the best of. So then she gets to like edit it you know, executive summary version. So it doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be like mature or like <laughs> big, like, you know, it just, it makes me laugh and happy, just like you were saying. And that's just such a fun way to start the day. So here you go, pro tips. Number three, saying no to most 
things. There's a quote here from this guy, Warren Buffett, he, you know, successful or whatever. The difference between successful people and really successful people is that really successful people say no to almost everything. Also, saying no is super hard, said me. And especially when, in addition to procrastinating and being control freak, there might also be some people pleasers in the real estate industry, and probably not. I mean, it's probably just me. Um, say, um, I think we are all pretty, or like, well, there's a continuum, right? You can say no to things that you know aren't good for you or that you know, you know, eventually get muscles that like if somebody asks you for something, you're not feeling it or it's not in alignment, great. I think the really tricky part is getting to the point where you're saying no to really good things, really good things, things that you want to do, things that you would like to do, things that you do think that would bring you joy. The challenge is that we say it, it's we have to keep like paring down, paring down, paring down to those few things that we really are the best of the best. And that's how we protect our time and energy and our sanity and get amazing results in the areas that are the very, very most. So saying no to really good things, that's sort of like the, the huge opportunity. And the other thing is if you, um, as humans, there's um, also have read recently or half read a book before I stopped reading it, um, that as humans, we are programmed, like we want to do things. We wanna add things, we wanna check things off, we wanna make forward progress. That is how we are wired. And so one of the tools that I use, especially when I reach a point of feeling really overwhelmed is, is creating something called a not to-do list. And this is where I take really good ideas of things I want to do and I put them on this not to do list and then I check them off that I did not do them and I celebrate that I did not do them. Um, one of the things recently was like Halloween costumes for my dogs. Love that. So cute. They're very small and funny. And I was like, you know what? I'm just not going to do that. And then I put it on the not to do list and then I felt great about not doing it. So if you struggle with wanting to do more than you can ever do, anyone, um, that is a technique that really I find very satisfying and then can celebrate and like do not doing if you need to do that. Mm -hmm. Also remember that I was saying based on my own definition of saying, not in any professional capacity. Um, Anyone else have tips or tricks on saying no? Anyone else struggle with saying no? Well, I struggle with saying no. You probably know this, Martha. Um, <laughs> I am learning to outsource when I can. I don't have to do it. I love coming home in the evening and seeing all of my, seeing my house fully decorated with my five Christmas trees. Don't judge me. Um, <laughs> And the out the then I compete with my neighbors, and but guess what? My neighbors outsource their outdoor lights. They don't do them themselves. So what I'm learning is that next year, if my budget allows, I will outsource the outdoor decorating. I love experiencing the lights as I pull into the garage. I don't have mm -hmm. to do the decorating. So yeah. that's one thing that I'm going to try to do is. I well, might have lost because it. all too often I say yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then it goes back to asking for help or pay for help. You know, that's that's another way that we can say yes to things that we don't have time for. Awesome. Thanks, B. Anyone else in the share? Okay. Not to do list. Try it. <laughs> okay. Number two. Meditate, okay? You can sigh, groan, whatever. Ugh. Um, but why, Martha? Why do we have to do this? I can't meditate. I hate meditating. I tried meditating. I can't meditate. I tried it. It doesn't work. I can't do it. I can't do it. Do it. My mind would stop. Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So I have this really annoying thing that I say to people that I'm sure I got from somewhere else. If you can't meditate for five minutes, then you need to do it for 10 minutes or 20 or 30. There's a super cool dude and um, friend of mine 
Joel, who goes on retreats and meditates for 24 hours straight, like drifts in and out even of sleep. So that, that takes a special kind of practice in human. Um, however, it, we're talking about 10 minutes a day generally to get huge, huge benefits. And I highly recommend these three apps. I've used them all before. Um, I like Calm because it's a Canadian lady and she's like my friend from my homeland. Headspace is super great for um, just learning how to meditate the first time, the psychology, the practicality of it. Um, and 10% Happier is a great app too. Here is my little soapbox on meditation. There are two selves. I'm gonna go a little existential, get ready. Um, also that donut is the best thing ever, right? Um, there are two selves. There's our real self, our knowing our like best version of ourselves, the self that like imagine that you're fully rested and your to-do list is checked off and you go to some big like brainstorming conference or whatever and you like, yes, this is what I want from my life, all that, you know, like that best self you. And then there's that voice that talks to us in there in our head that is saying, oh, you really didn't do enough today. Oh, you dropped that ball. Oh, you really could have done better here. That voice. I'm sure we, yes, no, I'm not sure. We all have it. Okay. We all have it. And sometimes that voice is mean. And sometimes that voice is completely wrong. And sometimes that voice is helpful. It depends on the day and the material and also what we are going through at the time. Your thoughts or that other voice that is talking to you, 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 we can't believe everything that we think. It's not all true. And the only way to create space between your best self and your thoughts is to build a muscle that is that space. So meditation, and I've been doing this for like, say six or seven years, almost daily. It is not about sitting still and not having thoughts. So if you've tried to meditate before and that's what you thought you were supposed to do is like reach this place where you are thoughtless, that is not the point. That is a thing that some people may try to do and study and find. What meditation is about, at least from Martha Newport's non-professional <laughs> untrained perspective of experience is having a thought and then letting it go through the breath, through just playing with it. And the exercise of doing that, just like if you were trying to run a marathon, just like if you were trying to build muscle mass, weightlifting, you have to practice and build that muscle every day. And what happens is you go from a place where your thoughts and your mind are driving you and directing you and telling you and you're believing everything it says to having this space between your best self and that mind and the thoughts that sometimes serve you and sometimes are wrong and be able to question it and play with it and not let it control you. So this is why this is number two. <laughs> I've debated making it number one. Um, only 10 minutes a day, five, 10 minutes a day is enough time to build this practice. You don't have to do it for 24 hours like my super cool friend, Joel. Um, it, but daily is the key to just having it be at a fixed time, pick a time in the morning, maybe, you know, and attach it to another habit where you just pick one of these apps and start doing it. And it is not competitive. It is not just like we were talking about before and Elaine's talking about, you, you can't win at this. You can receive I'm many not, benefits. I'm not going to do it here, Martha. Huh? If it's not competitive, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> are there also, wait, hold on. Do we have control freaks that procrastinate that are competitive? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. That don't sit still. It's almost like, it's almost like this profession was made to drive us literally insane. <laughs> Um, but I can tell you as a recovering perfectionist control freak, all of these things and never would have been the, you know, the type of person that would be into spending time that was not productive. This is, um, you know, it's still not really quite counting as you're doing nothing time. 
but it, it just creates this space. And in that space, you have time to react, respond, to question. Um, and once you get in the habit and stop trying to make it competitive or make it be something or control yourself meditating or win at doing it or thinking, if I just sit still in five minutes, I won't think about anything, no. Um, give it a go. There's tons of science and more than just me behind it. Um, it just makes, I would say that this just makes such a huge difference. So that would be, if you have one New Year's resolution that you start in December, this would be my help for you. <laughs> Anyone already have this as a regular thing they do? Martha, just as a curiosity, how do these apps work? How do they help you meditate? Yeah, that is an amazing question. So first of all, things like that most of them have a starter pack that's basically you listen to it guided, like they're telling you about meditation and what to do. Because it is not just like there is stuff you do right you you your thoughts come you're using your breath to like and focusing on your breath actually stops you from paying attention to your thoughts um, and what the apps do is one they're a timer so you know that you're set um, and two they have to different extents they guide you through the process so they're like for example like okay get set, settled get comfortable take breaths. Um, there's also little mini exercises that they may do. Um, things like count 10 breaths or hold your breath and then those kind of things. Um, and one of the things that I really love um, about Headspace is that it also has very specific, well, but all of them, um, very specific um, for certain situations in life. Um, guided meditation. So for example, when I had knee surgery a few years ago, there's one for like, just kind of they're talking to you, but not the whole time. And talking about like, how mentally to recover from an injury and how to focus on that healing and not fight the fact that you're, you know, working with your body and not fighting it that it's not performing for you. Um, Calm has some really cool ones. I used to struggle a lot with anxiety and even panic attacks. And Calm has one where you can do like even emergency packs. So like you're starting to freak out and you just like listen to it and it's like, like literally talking, coming your breath down in two or three minutes, those kind of things. So it's like how to, and then a little bit of guidance because I mean, eventually you can get to a point where you just sit and meditate yourself and that's fine. But it's, it's you're learning any new skill, right? You want a teacher, you want guidance, you want a coach um, and all of these apps, um, you know, they're, they're, they're different. Um, you can try them all for free and just kind of see which one annoys you the least to start. <laughs> um, and which voice you like just keeping you company. Does that help? Cool. It's so good. So good. All right. And number one, Elena, you already like you basically stole my thunder on the top, like number two and number one. So I love you and thank you. So obviously Martha and Elena recommend meditation and practicing gratitude. Um, this, uh, I did a Facebook Live like maybe three weeks ago, I guess, the week of Thanksgiving on gratitude, but this is a huge, I put this as number one because it is literally the easiest thing that we can do and we can do it all the time and it's impossible to feel fear, stress, frustration, anger, all those things and gratitude at the same time your body it like short the the minute you start listing and thinking about things that you're grateful for it literally just turns everything else off and um all kinds of science around how it enhances your mood your sleep your um, stress level your relationships your mindset like all of these things um it does it all so i um I'm a big proponent of starting your day with gratitude. And I love the five minute gratitude, like sitting still for five minutes and listing things you're grateful for. First of all, I wrote that down. I'm totally doing that. Um, and it's also how I start every day. So um, in my journal, <laughs> um, 
the, I do the date and then I put at least three things that I'm grateful for to start the day. And then um, in case it's interesting, I also then go through what I want to focus on in terms of priorities, not necessarily business, but just like mindset wise or, or work. Um, and then at the end of the day is a nice time to also go back and review what happened and, and have a couple of things that you're grateful for as well. And it's something that you, it's a really nice anchor. It's like a lovely compliment to meditate and then just write that down, you know, combine habits, stack habits. Um, and it's also something when you're feeling in the moment that you're stressed or you're angry or you're having a hard time with something, taking a breath just to get a little space from it. And then thinking of three things you're grateful for and thinking about what's actually good in the moment, it literally makes the other stuff go away. And it's it doesn't require any money, any time, like special time, going to a gym, you know, it's just, it's always there. Um, and it it literally stops all those other thoughts because your brain cannot be grateful and yucky things at the same time. So that's why it's my number one favorite because it's easy and it works so well. <laughs> Can anyone tell me something they're grateful for right now? <laughs> Let's everyone. We're I'm grateful Thanksgiving. for you. Thank you. I'm grateful that everybody came today and is like so open and sharing and for all the things that I just learned too. I'm so grateful for that. What else? Everyone give me one. I came here for you. You can give me one thing you're grateful for. Uh, this is something. I, this is this is a technique that I do a lot, Martha. I'm, I I am truly grateful for so many things. I I don't, I don't even know where to start. I I'm, I know I am a very lucky person. Uh, where I'm at, uh, the gifts I've been given, it's just beyond measure. Honestly. Can you give us one specific one today in this moment? <laughs> okay, I'll start. Uh, I, I'm just I'm grateful for the gift that I that I've been given, I can play music. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm incredibly grateful for this wonderful woman that I get to spend my life with. She's amazing. And not to mention our son, 24 years old, who's turning out to be amazing. I have a wonderful house, a wonderful dog. I mean, come on. I, I, come on. I'll be boasting if I go on anything. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, I, I truly know I am extremely lucky. I see so many people out there that, that are not, not anywhere near as lucky as I am. And uh, uh, yeah, it's, and that's, a, you know, not to mention the billions of people across the world that are struggling just to stay alive. I mean, let's keep it in perspective. We are so freaking lucky to live mm -hmm. here in the Triangle area at all, period. I don't know. It, you know, it's just, yeah, this is one I've got. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> all right, text me about which meditation app you like after this. <laughs> Shelby, how about you? Well, I'm gonna I, call because I'm going to make everyone do it because I'm really annoying. So get ready. Fine. Yeah. And we can roll with this. We got you. Mm -hmm. I know you a little bit, Martha. <laughs> um, I am super grateful for my awesome, huge family that I have. <laughs> um, and also my work team. It's amazing. And now the Calm app that I just downloaded. So um, to help with anxiety, just a little bit. I'm going to see how that goes. Uh, but a million more things like Armand, I could go on and on. So for sure. I'm going to go up order of higher on my screen. Sorry if that's different from your screen. Elizabeth, what's something you're grateful for? I just unmute them. remember to unmute. So um, yes, I'm grateful that I remember that instead of talking for a minute um, into Doug's face, <laughs> but I'm grateful for my team. Um, I think some of you probably know I'm newer to Martha's team and having done real estate alone before, it's just, this is kind of the dynamic of our team every day. So I'm grateful to learn from an awesome group of people and just have support and um, be encouraged to grow and stretch instead of, uh, you know, being isolated and, and stuck in my stuff. So I'm grateful for you, Martha, and for my entire team. Thank you. Crystal? Uh, well, I, of course, am also grateful for our team. Um, 
and my family, of course, too, um, but also music today, especially. Yay. Thank you. Tracy, what you got? Um, I think the word that comes to mind is um, connection. Mm -hmm. um, I think that I'm grateful that I realized the importance of connection to people, to animals, to music, to nature. Um, I don't know, you know, all the things that keep us, that keep us grounded and balanced and keep us sane and keep us growing. Um, so yeah, connection and, and I'm grateful for this today because, uh, these kind of resources, just kind of getting together and learning what, what each other, what we do as our practices, it's great. So I love it. Thank you. Laura, what you got? Um, hi. So I love doing a gratitude list. And um, I sort of always started off with coffee because I do it in the morning. And, um, but, uh, you know, family, kids, dogs, um, this year, I'm really grateful that I was able to, I mean, I did a complete career switch um, and I'm so grateful for that. I'm still in the like part where I, I love my new job. So um, I'm grateful for that. And I love this. And the other thing is I use the Calm app too to meditate, but it also has sleep stories when you can't sleep and your, um, your, mind, if your mind is racing and you can have like LeBron tell you a a sleep story and that helps a lot so it's a great app <laughs> especially lebron or yeah. um uh, my um matthew mcconaughey sometimes he helps me mm -hmm. night night matthew mm -hmm. yeah we sleep too. <laughs> <laughs> night night <laughs> peggy what are you grateful for today well, I'm grateful for my family as always, and um, and definitely for my my team. You guys are my rock to get through the days. <laughs> so it's been um, pretty amazing year and a half with you, Martha, and everybody on the team. So it's been that's my my biggest gratitude there, and um, and mainly the other one is my health. You know, when you you know when you lose your um, ability to do something that you love like running like for me when I get hurt it's really hard and so I am just so grateful that I have a body that will allow me to do things like that and that I'm healthy and my, my family is healthy as well so and thank you for doing this this is awesome ah, love you I right, got a few minutes so we're gonna go quicker everyone we don't have to talk about our team anymore even though I feel all that love thank you Cub what's something you're grateful for did you say cub yeah so this is cheesy but this is true and i think those that know me know this i'm thankful for our members because i love what i do and if i didn't have my members i couldn't do what i do thank you we're grateful for you too aaron i'm grateful that my wife does a pinterest board for the things she would like for christmas <laughs> oh my gosh that's amazing. Elena? <laughs> um, I am grateful for this cool app called Blinkist. Yes. Which allows me to feel like I'm reading tons of books when in fact I'm only hearing the key points. And I like to listen to it before I go to bed. So it kind of clears out my thoughts and gives me something maybe to think about. And there are a lot of things on there that also are about, you know, mental health stuff, relationship mm -hmm. stuff. That's just kind of good to have someone to tell you the right way. Awesome. Bridget? Yes, I'm still here. <laughs> I am grateful for uh, my friends that keep me accountable. My friends. Um, they don't let me get by with the BS. They keep it straight. They keep it real. And I need that in my life. And that's what I'm grateful for. Awesome. And we're back. I am crazy grateful for my cat who does actually keep me sane with this career and life in general. He just, he's, he's there. He's consistent. 
He knows what he wants. I come back to him every day. It's just, <laughs> I am crazy grateful for my cat. I don't know what I do without him. Oh, I love that. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everyone for sharing and for coming, taking an hour out of this very busy time of year, um, especially in life. And if you, I, I did want to plug, shameless plug, I asked Cubby said I was allowed to do this. So I, um, I earlier this year started a coaching and consulting company um, and I have two openings for 2022. Um, so it's both coaching in terms of kind of thing vibe and things we talk about here in terms of mindset and motivation and mindfulness. Um, and also because my background is, um, I have two degrees in business. It is also specifically consulting around um, the business problems that we have if we might not all have that background. So um, one of my biggest passion is financials. So um, profit and loss statements and all that kind of nerdy goodness. Um, as well as marketing and HR and operations and systems and all that good stuff. So if you or anyone you know might find that helpful, I have two openings and you can just go on our website and use the contact form because I realized putting my personal email and cell phone number on YouTube was probably not the best idea. Uh, our YouTube channel, is, speaking of, is suspended currently. Um, so if you're looking for our content, please go on social media because we didn't really do anything bad, but our channel suspended and there is only one human on this earth that is allowed to know what I listen to on Spotify and I'm not taking any other followers at this time. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate you coming and I hope you have a wonderful holiday and at least one of these tips is helpful in bringing you more joy and more peace this holiday season.